Two weeks ago, few Tasmanians, let alone any mainlanders, knew the names of these backbenchers. Today, Lara Alexander and John Tucker hold the state government's future in their hands after abandoning the Liberals over a proposed football stadium. How are you feeling about your first day on the crossbench? It's pretty exciting to be going in and, yeah, creating history we are. The pair have joined the crossbench after publicly questioning a stadium that's dividing the island state. Let's keep up the rage. Just over a week ago, a few thousand protesters voiced their anger at the cost of the proposed stadium in Hobart. Tasmanians have had a bloody gutful over your stadium! And you can stick it up your bum! Phil McLaughlin thought he could walk all over Tasmanians. Get them to bankrupt their own state for his stadium. It's not going to happen, Gil. It's not going to happen. If this goes ahead, Tasmanians are going to pay for it with closed hospital beds, wards, um, closed schools, a worsening housing crisis. So it, it's really going to impact on the poorest state in Australia. Award-winning author Richard Flanagan is one of those opposed to the stadium, which is a condition of the AFL granting Tasmania a long-desired football team. There's a desire for the team, and it's very sad for people that it's been mixed up with this other ludicrous and destructive demand um, that we never asked for and never wanted. After months of negotiations, the Tasmanian Premier, Jeremy Rockliffe, has locked in a deal for a new stadium and a new team. The AFL was adamant that Tasmania's two existing grounds weren't fit for a new club. If you want an AFL team, it comes with a stadium. Now, the people had their views about that, but it's now funded. It is something that comes together. You can't have one without the other. It is a, an investment in our future. This is an investment uh, that will employ people, 4,200 people during construction, ongoing activity uh, to $85 million a year, uh, bringing our own AFL team, bringing all the opportunities that other states have. The past 10 days has seen concern about the stadium deal spill from public protests into the party room. We do want the team. But at what cost? Um, and at what cost to our future generations? In a shock move, Lara Alexander and John Tucker quit the party, plunging the country's only Liberal government into minority. The stadium was concerning to me because I didn't think that we were getting the details that we needed to be given to make informed decisions about whether this was a good decision. I was not happy with the level of communication transparency and how this has been approached. To shore up support from the new independents, the Tasmanian Premier agreed to their demands to publicly release most of the deal he signed with the AFL. For 23,000 seats under a fixed roof, it's estimated the Macquarie Point Stadium will cost $715 million. That's made up of 15 million from the AFL, 85 from private partnerships, 240 million from the federal government and 375 million from the Tasmanian government. The contract confirms the Tasmanian government will be responsible for any stadium cost overruns and will need to compensate the new club if two construction deadlines aren't met before completion in 2028. But the state's liabilities don't end with the building of the stadium. It's committed $12 million a year for the club's start-up costs. And if it isn't financially sustainable after 12 years and the government doesn't agree to further funding, the AFL can move the club or terminate the contract. Has the Tasmanian government effectively signed a blank cheque for that AFL stadium? Uh, certainly not. We've provided a careful and measured response and the budget will reflect that. To provide that 12-year certainty uh, really does set up the state and the team for long-term success. It is a blank cheque, in effect, and I would rather spend the money somewhere else. From what I've seen so far, I would have to say that the AFL are a lot better negotiators than the Tasmanian government. In exchange for releasing the details of the deal, the new independents have offered the Premier confidence and supply, but it's not guaranteed. I don't think this deal is fair. 
to be, uh, to be honest. Um, I think it's, it's terribly lopsided. MPs may only have one chance to voice their opinion on the stadium project in state parliament by either voting to block it or sending it to the state's planning commission. The Labor opposition has spoken out against the stadium, but so far hasn't committed to voting it down and likely destroying the dream of a Tasmanian AFL team. As for the two new crossbenchers, they want to see more detail before they make a decision. At this stage, with very little information, I would not find myself in a position to support based on what I, I have seen so far. We want to see the financials, we want to see the um, treasury assessments of this project. This is the biggest infrastructure project that Tasmania's ever seen. He can't even convince his own party room to stick with him. The Premier is expected to survive a no confidence motion today with the backing of the two new independents. Whether he'll be able to lock in Parliament's support to start building the stadium in 2025 is another question. Now, the project has to be scrutinised and it has to convince not just me, it has to convince a number of people that it's got merit.